Put aside what you think of EVs, put aside the politics of EVs, even put aside where the energy comes from. Because ready or not, performance versions of EVs from mainstream car manufacturers are now a reality. The question you and I have to answer, are they deserving of badges and names like AMG that you and I have held in high performance esteem for years? Good news, an all new AMG, and personally one in my favorite size carrying case, the midsize. Now, the bad news, it's electric. Why is that bad news? 5,567 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 2,525 kilograms, not appreciably heavier than the standard EQE all-wheel drive. With that, Sport Plus. Oh God, that's not a standard EQE. Oh my God, that is quick. Uh, yes, of course, there's always a benefit to instantaneous torque of two electric motors, especially in a midsize sedan. It does deliver power more immediate than the EQS AMG, and not just because of size, the overall feel of the way this delivers power. Now, there's a lot going on here that's different. Uh, number one, there is a totally different menu of parts in terms of electric hardware. The electric motors, the inverter, the battery management, as well as the wiring harness is all different in the EQE AMG. And yeah, that gives us a faster car, but it also changes the way in which they deliver the power, specifically how much power. So there are like five or six modes here, and what they do is dial in different amounts of power. So there's a valet or like a driver's education mode, and that's a low amount of power, meaning it's not delivering 100% of the power of the electric motors. Then it ratchets up from there gradually to 100% in sport mode. But this one, this is the dynamic plus, so it has the overboost function of 10% extra power and that's delivered in sport plus which you and i are in right now then there are the driving dynamics and here there are two things that are going on number one the ride quality and then the fact that it is an amg let's start with the ride quality because that's the good news by far this is the best of the new Mercedes EQ platform sedans and crossovers, SUVs, whatever you want to call them, in terms of ride quality. It's the right amount of ride quality. It's German. Now, what specifically do I mean by that? Well, driving it around town or even not very aggressive on country roads, it feels more like a large performance car, a performance mid-size sedan, which is what an E-Class AMG should feel like. It doesn't feel like a luxury car. It doesn't feel connected to the development of a luxury car, which the EQE does. Then there's applications like this, pushing it aggressively on canyon roads, track days, that kind of stuff. And here, one should be able to do this in a mid-size AMG sedan. And this, you can't help but feeling that extra weight. 5,600 pounds is not really the problem here. It's where you feel the 5,600 pounds. It's strange, but you feel it high in the car, which is counterintuitive to the packaging of an electric vehicle. Because you and I were basically sitting on a queen size mattress of a 90 kilowatt hour battery. So you should have the feel of the weight low in the car, which is what you get in other EVs. Something about this here, it feels tall. It feels like the center of gravity is high. And as such, I don't feel as confident pushing it aggressively on roads like this. There are times where I feel like you could get out over your skis if you didn't have driver skill. And that's where I would say the carbon ceramic rotors do make a difference because they back up the extra thrust this thing has and, and really the extra weight. Now, part of the good news, bad news here in terms of driving dynamics is the steering. The good news is it is by far the best out of all the Mercedes EQ sedans and crossovers you and I have driven. It's not the perfect amount of weight to the steering, but it's good. You actually do get a little bit of feedback. You do get a little bit of direct connection to the road with the steering here, which is hard to do in an electric car. Something tells me Mercedes engineers have now had more learning 
with the different flavors of EQ they've brought out, and they've taken all of that learning and applied it to this, which does make a difference. Now, working in conjunction with the extra tuning of the steering here is a rear wheel steering system. No, it does not have the 10 degrees of steering out of the S-Class. This is 3.6 in the line of demarcation, where it goes from opposite to in the same direction is 37 miles an hour. And here I have to say it does contribute to some additional stability in a very heavy car. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options Game, with today's contestant, the first ever E-Class that is electric, that is also an AMG. This is the EQE AMG for a base price of $106,900. Now, the obvious question, how much was the base price of the EQE 350, the cheap seats in the EQE world? That was $74,900. Now, the second obvious question, wait a minute, in Europe, there's two versions of this car. There's an EQE AMG 43, and an EQE AMG 53, which this is. North America, we only get the one with the more power. Uh, then there are three different flavors on offer. This one is the fancy one, the Pinnacle, which adds the head-up display and four-zone climate control, amongst other things. It's about a $2,200 difference. And then we get to the color. Manufactor Graphite Gray Magno. In the Mercedes world, Magno means it is a flat paint. No, that is not a wrap. It is $3,250. Now, it looks cool if you want the whole blackout thing. However, there was a choice here. Shoot this car now or wait till April to get a Magno Blue, which comes off the page with the black trim. I wanted that one, but couldn't wait for it. Anyway, we press on to the black and sable brown Napa leather interior, $2,900. Then the carbon ceramic brakes which we've discussed, work well. But they're not $10,000, believe it or not. It is only $5,450. That's the cheapest I've ever seen that option. Uh, then the 110 power cable. So to plug it in at your house, that is optional, $250. Then we talked about this having a valet mode. They also call it a beginner mode where it lowers the output. That is optional for $50. Then a HEPA filter, $450. Then the acoustic comfort glass, $1,100. Then a 21 inch wheels in the black finish. That is an additional $1,400. The multi contour seats in the front with the massage, $1,100. Heated and vented seats in the front, $450. Then the black microfiber headliner transforms the interior, but here's the problem. This is black on black. So the tactile feel is great on the inside of this car. It's just too much black. So I wouldn't pay the extra $1,600 for a fancy headliner in these colors. In other colors, absolutely. Now this being an all wheel drive car, one has to have the winter package, which is a heated windscreen and heated rear seats for $1,250. Then the only other thing we have to pay extra for is the destination and handling von Bremen Deutschland for $1,150, which brings us to a total retail price of the first ever E-Class AMG $130,240. A couple of interesting notes of what I would call playfulness rather than performance in an electric vehicle. Not just Mercedes, but all manufacturers realize that there is a long road to hoe between now with EVs that are sort of performance and what will be a performance EV that's even close to matching the driving dynamics of an internal combustion engine car. So what they do is they engineer in some unique playfulness to give it some personality that is somewhat lost by losing the gas engine. Like for example, the graphics on this car. You've got the screen here, the screen here, as well as even in the head up display, I can see the pitch squat dive and roll. Even in the head up display, they have this like Tron-esque display. It literally looks like something that's been lifted from the original Tron movie. Then of course, you probably have heard this throughout the entire episode, there is this sound that is amplified in Sport Plus mode, but you can set it up to work in all individual modes. Now, interesting side note about that sound. Yeah, it's programmed to work in Sport Plus mode, a reduced version in Sport mode. However, one can program it into the individual mode. So let's say for the sake of discussion, you want to extend the range of the vehicle. 
you can use it in individual mode with the reduced, so less percentage of power being delivered, but it still sounds like something from Star Trek. So what have we learned today? Well, unequivocally, this, very good. I'd go so far as to saying it is the best of all of the Mercedes EVs that are coming off this first full EV platform. However, there's a catch. That is not a full fat AMG. It's more deserving of like the AMG line. It's kind of the middle of the road in performance because there's too many foibles with the inherent design of any electric car, not just a Mercedes. This really isn't ready for AMG prime time until about a thousand pounds come out of it. That's where we get to the wish list. And follow me for a minute here. Mercedes does this as AMG line, still has the basics like the EQE 350 and 500, but in terms of real AMGs, for the time being, the interim, until the technology of batteries catches up, how about plug-in hybrid that's coupled with an internal combustion engine, but here's the catch, it can't be complex, meaning something small, not a lot of turbochargers, not a lot of superchargers, ideally taking advantage of 48 volt architecture, which Mercedes has demonstrated experience in. And there are three reasons I say this. Number one, take advantage of the benefits of an EV, instantaneous torque, take advantage of a plug-in hybrid system with a smaller, less complex engine to lower the weight, and then put all this together to enhance the overall reliability in a very complex car until the technology catches up to make a fully electric, full fat AMG. But I am just one man, and this is the point of the episode that I turn around to you to find in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All Word, Moto Man TV All Word, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And with that, if you got value out of this episode, I would greatly appreciate you clicking subscribe, notifications, and most importantly, sharing this episode with your friends on your socials. Until I see you in the next episode, bish beta.